Hi, I'm Frank Spear. I want to welcome you to this blog. You know, in previous sections, we've spent a lot of time talking about anterior temporization, all the way from the creation of the initial model for indirect temporization through carving, finishing, polishing, etc. What we haven't talked about is temporary cementation. <clears throat> what I'd like to do in this series is actually talk to you about temporary cements, both for anterior and posterior restorations. When you think about temporary cements, there's certain criteria we want. Obviously, we want them retentive, but we still want to be able to remove them. We also want it easy to clean up at the time you place the temporary, but also easy to clean up at the time you remove the temporary. We want it to have a positive impact on the pulp and the soft tissue. We want it to not interfere with bonding procedures. And we also want to think about aesthetics because um, different temporary cements have different colors and opacities and they can show through our temporary restorations. To give you an idea <clears throat> of why there may be some confusion about temporary cements, I just looked online today uh, at Patterson Dental and typed in temporary cementation or temporary cements and there's actually 429 different temporary cements online at Patterson Dental. No wonder people kind of can't figure out what to do. What that tells you is there's a lot of different temporary cements that work. So I'm going to kind of limit this segment to just what I use um, and why I use it <clears throat> because there's certainly other ways of doing it besides the way I do it. When I look at the categories, if you really were to narrow down temporary cements, you kind of have ZOE, non-eugenol, resin, polycarboxylate, and glass ionomer. I'm going to leave out polycarboxylate and glass ionomer. I know some people love them, but to me they're too hard to clean off the tooth because they like to stick to the tooth. So in my world, I live with ZOE, non-eugenol, or resin cements. What I would consider to be the traditional family would be the eugenol containing products like Temp Bond. Um, these days you can get uh, much easier mixing if you buy things like the Embonte from, from Ducks Dental, which comes in a nice syringe, but it's a very traditional zinc oxide eugenol cement. And to me, there are certain advantages to that. Eugenol has some very favorable characteristics, especially in terms of its palliative nature towards the pulp its seal and its antibacterial nature. So I happen to like eugenol containing cements. On the non-eugenol side, products like Zone are very, very popular. Again, it's a simple mixing system, um, very retentive, but doesn't have the eugenol in it. And then we also have resin temporary cements, um, products like Neotemp, which is a water pick product, or Temp Bond Clear, which is a you know, another concept of a resin temporary cement that's a dual cure product. Now, <clears throat> the challenge I have with resin temporary cements is quite simple, and that is they leak. If they're not bonded, they leak. And the challenge of having a leaking temporary is, any of you have done it who know you can get tooth sensitivity, which is very problematic, but you also can get black bacteria growing underneath it. So your patient comes back with this nice black band around the gingiva where bacteria are growing underneath the temporary. Now, I use resin temporary cements and especially use them on veneers um, or for, in some cases, non-retentive onlay preps. But other than veneers and non-retentive areas, I don't use resin temporary cements. I usually use traditional cements for full crowns or onlays or inlays. When I use a resin temporary cement, I always use it with Gluma, and Gluma is a great disinfectant and a great desensitizer. And so whenever I'm using a resin temporary cement, I'm going to show you a video in a second of how I use it, but the Gluma will keep that black bacteria from growing underneath. It will also, in fact, also keep the tooth from being sensitive. So here's a set of veneer temporaries. We're trying them on to make sure that the fit is correct before we actually place them. And they were made uh, very much like the series that you've seen in the, the segment over the last uh, eight weeks or so, which is all the indirect temporization. I typically spot etch all of my veneer restorations, so small dot of etchant on the enamel. Rinse the etchant off, and now I'm going to take an applicator and I'm going to apply the Gluma. 
and we don't want the gluma running all over the mucosa we don't want it on tissue because it is glutaraldehyde in there so a little foam applicator and this is gluma desensitizer this isn't gluma bonding agent this is just the gluma desensitizer it's glutaraldehyde and hema and now I don't need to actually place any bonding agent because the temporary cement will stick to the etched area just fine and now I seat the temporary to place now this temporary this patient wanted very white teeth and so I'm using neotemp as a temporary cement and I let it get to a rubbery phase before I try and clean it up and then I just go ahead and start to pick at it once it finally gets to that rubbery phase. We certainly don't want it to go all the way cured before you start cleaning it. It's too much work. My most common temporary cement today for veneer temporaries, unless I would really want to brighten them significantly, in which case a product like Neotemp works well, but my most common resin cement is what you just saw in terms of etch and gluma, but then I use one of my light cured resin cements out of my resin cementation kit. I happen to use the 3M Reliax product, but I pick one of the colors I don't use very often, and I actually use that to put my temporaries on for my veneers. Now, what do I personally use for full crown temporaries? Well, for pretty much 30 years, my typical temporary cement for full crowns has been caulk final for inlays, for retentive onlays, for full crowns. It's a reinforced ZOE cement, much like IRM is. Great properties in terms of temporaries don't come loose. Um, the temporaries, the teeth are almost never sensitive underneath it because of the, the eugenol contained within it. And <clears throat> let's talk about eugenol and bonding because I do a lot of bonded restorations on my full crowns. Free eugenol is what inhibits polymerization of cements. It's the free eugenol itself. Free eugenol is what inhibits the polymerization of our temporary cements. And what we know from research is that, in fact, the diffusion of eugenol from ZOE cement peaks at one day after you cement the temporaries. And it's essentially down to zero by 14 days. What that means is if your temporary is on there for 14 days, there's basically no free eugenol left. And in fact, if you look, and I'm giving you an article on the right just as a reference for uh, the, the eugenol diffusion, but if you actually look in the literature for articles about uh, the interference of ZOE on bonding when compared to non-eugenol cements, um, here's at least four references, and there's actually more than that that will show you there's no difference whatsoever between eugenol containing and non-eugenol containing cements as far as bonding as long as the temporary is in place at least seven days. Now the truth is eugenol and non-eugenol containing cements interfere with bonding. They both do. But it's not because of the eugenol. It's because of the contamination of the temporary cement on the tooth. So what we do know is when you want to bond you have to clean the tooth. And air abrasion is one option that's been well researched other options are a rubber cup with pumice and water and excavation with metal instruments. And in fact, all of them seem to prove very effective. And here's some references for you if you would like to, in fact, research air abrasion. Basically, what it says is whether you use a eugenol containing cement or a non eugenol containing cement, if you air abrade the tooth and then apply your dentin adhesive, you get the same bond as if you would have applied the adhesive immediately upon prepping the dentin. So, <clears throat> just to show you a little video of cementing using caulk final, we'll put this upper arch in with caulk final. The biggest thing I want you to watch is actually how little cement expresses when it's seated. We paint with a brush Vaseline on the outside of the temporary, but then when we load the temporary cement, we load the temporary with a paintbrush, just painting the cement up the walls of the temporary. So here's the anterior temporary that we're going to be cementing. We check and make sure that it fits well first. And so we'll play this video. Putting all the segments in, it's three different pieces, making sure everything fits correctly. And then when we load the temporary, as I said, we'll paint Vaseline on the outside of it. And then we'll paint the eugenol inside with a brush. I don't want to fill it up. I don't need all of that. And so we're going to take the, the segments off <clears throat> and watch how little cement expresses. Now, the beauty of ZOE is you can just let it harden completely, and then it's easy to chip off. 
but if you load it too full, it goes everywhere, and then you're picking it off the gingiva, and you're trying to bite it in terms of the big chunks of it around the anterior teeth. And so that's a very typical cementation for me using caulk vinyl. And then you go in, you can clean it off with your uh, super floss in the areas in the posterior and an explorer in the uh, anterior segments once it's hard. Super simple cement to clean up. And here's what it looks like uh, once the temporary is completed and, and clean. So in our office, we essentially do use caulk final for almost all of our traditional cementation for the reasons I mentioned. And then we use uh, the resin cements, typically our light cured resin cement from our veneer kit as our typical resin cement for our veneers and bonded onlays. Now, what we haven't talked about in this one is how do you get everything back off? And so in future segments, that's what we'll be talking about is how do we get our temporaries back off once they've been placed? Enjoyed sharing this with you. I'll look forward to seeing you soon.